that was 1 Samuel 17, 32, and 51. So now, you probably heard the story of David and Goliath, and you've probably heard it so many times from different pastors and such, but I wanted to give you a different point of view. So I wanted to give you like Goliath's point of view because I've never heard that story told in his point of view, which is just so exciting to me because we always hear like the good ones, right? We never hear about the bad ones and what they had to go through. You know what I mean? We hear about the ones who triumphed and, and the ones who were like the champions and such. So, you know, I want to give you a point of view and that's my message. It's called point of view. So we're going to look at Goliath's point of view. And 32 says, like, don't worry about this Philistine. I'm sorry. 32 says, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. And then Saul said, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine. There's no way you can win. Like, he's been a man of war since his youth. And so, um... Previously, like Saul was out there and he saw how big Goliath was. This was up in the scriptures, a little higher up in the scriptures. And it caused Saul fear. Like it, like Gol Goliath like made Saul fearful to where they all ran. You know what I mean? So um, because Goliath caused fear in Saul, Saul tried to stop David from fighting something that terrified him terrified Saul you know like something that he feared you know something he felt like he didn't have the strength to do so it's like when somebody stops you because they've been stopped before like oh you're not gonna like complete the race because by the time you get to the second mile like you're gonna be too tired or you're gonna need more water so you're not gonna be able to finish type of thing like like he's trying to get him to stop just because his enemy caused fear in him. So don't fight that person just because I'm scared. Like, and it says that Goliath has been a man of war since his youth. So that makes me think, like, what was Goliath battling? You know, because it said that he's been at war since his youth. That war made me think that he was battling something. You know, so like he was battling something to cause fear in others. You know, like whatever you're battling, like you're projecting it on the other. You don't have trust, so you're projecting trust on somebody else. Like, you know what I mean? Like basically, Goliath wanted the army to bow down to him, to worship him. You know, so I was thinking, which was just my prediction, that since he's been at war since youth, that I thought to myself, like, okay, Goliath is a bully. You know, like, as I'm just reading, like, okay, you're a bully. Like, you've clearly been bullied when you were young. This is just my, predict my prediction. It's not in a word. But I felt like in those days, because Goliath was nine feet, I felt like in those days, it was like a little bit of, like, you were judged based on you being the outcast, based on you being different. And it's like, now we kind of not experiencing that because you can be different and be praised. But back then in like a little bit of our time, you know, it's like you, you, you're like, you're being bullied or you're being, um, because you're different because you're the nerd with the glasses and now it's cool. Like, because like you wore the weaves and stuff too prematurely, like you were judged, like, you know, you got to wear your own hair or they just going to talk about you. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I feel like he was bullied and he was judged for being different. He was judged because he was over nine feet tall. And as of right now, when I'm reading the scriptures, I don't know anyone bigger than Goliath. Like, I'm not sure if, like, all the Philistines were nine feet tall, but it's like he had the army, and he he had the Philistine army, and he was the one nine feet tall. He was the one that was obvious. He was the one that was different than the bunch. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe Goliath felt left out. You know, maybe he felt like he didn't fit in because he was so different than the others. You know, like, he tried his best to fit in. You know, he tried his, he tried his best to like, you know, maybe like stoop down to somebody's level. Like, you know, like maybe he tried his best, you know, and I feel like he had to be strong and he had to act tough 
and like cause other people to have fear because he was the one who was really fearful deep down inside. Like he was the one that was really hurting. So he like put on this face. Remember how we talked about last week about, you know, pretending to be something that we're not. And I feel like he's kind of like was pretending because he really had the fear inside. And not that the Bible says that that's just my prediction. And maybe you'll get something different when you read it, you know, but that just goes into like me thinking like, what have you been at war with since your youth? You know what I mean? Like, what have you been battling and fighting against that you've portrayed something on the outside, but you're really battling it on the inside? Like, what have you been at war with since your youth? Like, what have you been fighting against since, what have we been fighting against since our youth that has now matured in us? You know, now it's, it's matured. You know, I've been, I've been fighting against homosexuality, but now it's mature. Now I practice it. You know, I've been fighting against the adultery, but now it's matured. So I committed adultery. You know, like what have you been fighting against that has caused you war and torment? So now you project that on other people. You try to put up this shield and now you try to put up this faith of, uh, I mean, this face of like, I'm strong and like I'm I'm tall and I'm big and I'm about to cause fear in you like what have you battled against you know and that's just a question that I feel like maybe we can answer this week you know like what have you battled against what have you been at war against since your youth you know maybe that's a question that we can ask ourselves this week and go to God because he will give us the answers because once he starts to reveal things in you it's like dang I don't even know that that was in me. Like I told my mom maybe two weeks ago, like, dang, like where, I didn't realize I didn't have any peace. Like, where has my peace gone? Like, that's why I'm so, you know, impatient. Where has my peace gone? Like, but God started to reveal that I need peace and he is the God of peace. So I need to take that, what, what I have, I need to take that to him. I need to take my impatience to him. Because you're the God of peace. You can give me peace about my situation. In any circumstance, you should have peace. Whether you ain't got no money in the bank, you should have peace. Whether your car is just being given out on you from week to week, you should have peace. Like whether your kids have been running amok, you should have peace. And I've lost mine. And I'm okay to say it because now I get to have that encounter with God. And like I get to go searching for peace. Now I'm on my journey. Now I'm searching for peace. Everywhere I look, I'm searching for peace. The opportunity that I get, I'm searching for peace. We got to search for what we lack. We got to search. When God starts to put things up in front of our face. And he starts to put things up that are against us. That we may think that is against us. We got to go searching for something that we feel like we don't have. So that's why that's why I say like David in the, te in the text getting armed for, for battle. What, he's, what he told Saul was, in, I'm sorry. So David in the text, he was getting armed for battle. And it was interesting to me because verse 38 says that Saul gave David his own armor. He gave him the bronze helmet and he gave him the coat of mail was just like the body armor. And David put it on and he strapped the sword over himself and he took a step. Like he didn't take one step. He took two steps to see what it was like for him because he said like, oh, you know, I never worn such a thing. Like I can't go into battle in this. Like, I'm not comfortable. I'm not used to them. So let me just take it off. So that it, it was just like, like, like Saul gave David his protection. Saul was the king. He gave David his protection. And if we contrast this into our own lives, we have to know that God is not going to let you face a battle without his protection. He's not going to let you like, Go into something that you haven't seen yet. Before in the text, David was telling Saul like, oh, I took care of the sheep and, you know, I did this to the lion and I did this to the mouth of the lion and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and God protected me, you know, like you're going to your battles, you're going to see them before you step into the battle. 
Like you're going to train for it without you even knowing that you've trained for it. You know what I mean? Like you're going to face it and it's going to look a lot different than the real battle that you got to face. Mm, this is so good, man. This is so good. Like it's going to, that's not even in my notes. And mind you, like, I'm just like, God, speak through me because I'm not prepared. You know, but you're the battle that you're going to face. You're going to already have been facing it. He was already shepherding sheep and he was already like opening the mouth of lions when they went to go attack the sheep. Like he was already being the protector. He was already like being the shepherd, which he was over an army of his sheep. This is his army. This is his sheep. He ain't about to let a lion come and attack his sheep. He's not about to let Goliath come and attack the person's army who he serves. He's not about to let it happen. So God is not going to let you face a battle without his protection. Like you're going to go through it already before the real thing. The same faith that you had to go into the battle is the same faith you need to have to know that God will protect you in the battle. Don't worry about him like leaving your side like we talked about last week. He's gonna, you're going to leave him, but he's going to be right where you left him. He's going to stay right where you left him. Like when you go and you, and it's something that you got to face, you got to face, I don't know, maybe being the one least at your job and you supposed to be promoted, you know, and it's like, well, you did everything that you were supposed to and you should have been promoted, but the other person got promoted in front of you. You know, I don't know what that means and who that is for, but at the end of the day, it's just like, you're not, God is not going to leave you in the battle alone. You're going to have had to train for what you're going to have to experience. God will protect you in the battle, but you got to have faith going into it. You got to pull from what you have. David pulled from him being a shepherd boy to him looking at Goliath like, oh, I can take this. Goliath was bigger than David. Whatever you're facing may be bigger than you. You think that it's bigger than you. You think that it's too much to handle. You think that you've had enough. You think that you're overwhelmed. You think that you're just irritated. And you think that it's too much. I can't handle it. But little do you know, you can pull from what you have. You can pull from what you stewarded over. You can pull like you like maybe if you were one that didn't do good with money and then now you did good with money. But then there's this thing that caught your eye. It's like you can pull from what you have. Nah, I haven't been good with money before. So let me let me walk away from this thing. It ain't nothing that's too big for God. Your situation is not too big for God. What you're experiencing is not too big for God. It said that Jesus had to go through the same temptations that we have to to this day, but he did not sin. So that means you can pull from that power because the Holy Spirit lives in you. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that is on the inside of you to make you pull from what you have. You got to pull from what you have and you got to know that God will protect you in your battle, but that you've already trained for it. And little did you know that you did, but you did. So he'll make sure you're protected. And it is why in Ephesians 6, it tells us to put on the full armor of God. It tells us to put on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness and for shoes to put on the peace that comes from the good news and that we'll be fully prepared when we go in in the battle and that we have to hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows from the devil and we have to put on the salvation for helmet and take the sword of the spirit which is God's word like we have everything that we need for this battle whatever you're about to face you got everything that you need don't try to look into it in the future I was just telling my daughter that today when she was trying to land her backhand spring on her bar I'm just like stop going into it saying what if I fall fall and then say dang I need to do something different don't go into it with that mindset stop going into it like 
thinking you're not as good as you know as you say that you are you are good for this battle you are fit for this battle you have the tools that you need for your battle you have the weapons that you need for your battle you have everything that you need but stop like doing that to yourself we got to stop doing that to ourselves like what if what if what if this don't work or what if i don't have enough money or what if i don't have enough what if he don't give me enough love like what if nobody ever no, go into it saying like, oh, I know I'm about to defeat this. I know that I can accomplish this. I know this was my goals and God gave me the power and, and, and the drive and everything I needed to accomplish these goals. Go into it saying that you know that you can because that was the same faith that David had. He knew that he can defeat it by looking at it from a distance. Look at your situation from a distance. Look at it coming towards you saying, oh, I can defeat that. That ain't nothing. I can defeat that. That's nothing. That's nothing for me. I've trained for this. I've already been in what I needed to be in for this. Look at your situation from a distance and defeat it from a distance all these things that David had to try on from Saul's armor like it had to be tried on and tested out like it wasn't something that he can just say like oh okay yeah I feel good I'm about to just go into battle with this like no like it's something that we have to put on before we're ready to face the battle that God has put before us which means we got to be honest in our evaluation about ourselves, about where we're at when we put on these things that somebody else is, is given to us. Like, because when we step into what God has called us to face, we have to be sure about the armor we're putting on. Like, it's, it's okay to be honest and say to the king, I'm not used to having faith. Tell your God, you're not used to this faith thing. You're not used to the sword of the spirit. I'm not used to reading your word. I'm not used to when somebody is fighting up against me, let me tell them that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm not used to those things. I'm not used to the word of God. I'm not used to this salvation thing. I don't know how to give you my heart. I don't know how to search you wholeheartedly. I don't know how to have this faith thing. I don't know how to go on this journey with you, God. I don't know how to face what I'm about to attack. I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know how to but you got to use what you have. Your, what you have is honesty. If nobody else around, be honest with yourself. You ain't got to be, maybe you're not there yet to be honest with people in front of you, but be honest with yourself. When you in your closet, or when you at home alone and you don't want nobody else to see, be, be honest with yourself. I'm not there yet. I can't go into church and lift up my hands. I can't go into church and praise and worship. I can't do that. I can't do anything. I don't have the faith for that. I can't give you love because I never experienced love. I can't trust you because I don't trust myself. I cannot give you something that I don't have. I cannot be comfortable, comfortable with something that is new for me. I'm not comfortable, God. I'm not comfortable with going to forgive. I'm not comfortable. But I got to have faith to get through it. Because I got to pull from what I have. I got to pull from the faith that you've given me. And I got to pull from the evaluation within myself. I got to be honest with where I'm at. Because where you're at, remember, he's going to always be right there. He's going to meet you where you're at with open arms. Remember last week? He's going to meet you with open arms. He's going to run to you and embrace you. So you got to be honest about where you're at. But David knew that he couldn't go in those things. He knew he had to use what he had. What he had. Like that's what many of us do. We, we put on things, you know, that are like uncomfortable for us, but we, but we make it work. When we can just be honest and we can just, and we, we can just be, um, uh, what is the word? Uh, um. Ah, what is that word? Vulnerable. Sorry. We can be vulnerable. Little do we know that we can be vulnerable, but we're not vulnerable because we never got a chance to experience vulnerability. You know, we can be that. We can be honest. You know, so he, David used the five stones from a stream and he put them in the shepherd's bag and he was armed only with his staff and his sling. And then he went across the valley to fight the Philistine. So even like what's in between you, between you and the battle, 
What's in between you that you got to face first? You know, what do you got to deal with first before you can take that thing head on? What do you got to like let go? Because in the text above all this, it says that David like left some things behind. He couldn't take that in the battle with him. What are some things that you got to let go? What are some things that saying like, oh, I can't take this in the battle with me. I got to trust so I can't take this in the battle with me. I'm trying to trust my husband because I didn't have trust. So and I got issues like I can't take in no trust with me in this battle. I can't take in lying with me in this battle. I can't take in What can't you take with you and whatever you're about to face? What do you got to let go? You got to let go of pride. And you got to let go of unforgiveness and you got to let go of impatience and you got to let go of your sins because they can't go with you in the next season. Like there's going to be things that you have to go through, but there's going to be things that you have to leave behind so you can then go through and face and take on head on what you're about to attack. There's can't, there, you can't take everything with you. When God's trying to prepare you for things and he's trying to bring you into the next season, you can't take selfishness with you. Like ask the Holy Spirit, like, what do I need to let go of for this season? We all talking about our New Year's resolution. I want to do this. I want to do this. But what didn't you let go of in 2021? What do you still have? What is in your shepherd's bag that you're still carrying with you that you shouldn't be taking with you? You know, you're trying to hold on things that can't come. And all it's going to do is weigh you down. All it's going to do is hinder you. All it's going to do is not prepare you, from what you're, prepare you for what you're up against. So that means you got to let go of unforgiveness. And you got to lo- let go of selfishness. And you got to let go of impatience. You got to let go of those things because it cannot take you into your next season. You got to put in your bag, your shepherd's bag, What you need right now to face your battles right now. I don't know your battles. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how much water is above your head. I don't know what it may look like in your situation, but I know there's some things you're going to have to let go. And I know there's some things that you're going to now have to put in your shepherd's bag. You're going to have to put a little bit of faith in your shepherd's bag. And you're going to have to put some trust in your shepherd's bag. Even though they did you wrong, go ahead and put trust in your shepherd's bag so you can have it alongside of you. So you can know like, oh, I got it with me just in case I need to use it. Put in your bag what you're going to need for this season. Because when David put the stones in his shepherd's bag, He made me realize that whatever I have is whatever is going to make me comfortable. And whatever is going to make me be me and someone that I'm not, like, I'll be able to put in God's hands. Like, I can't put on what's comfortable. No, I can't put on what's uncomfortable to make me comfortable. I need to put on comfortability and what I have is what I'm going to give to God. Like, When I come back to like being honest with yourself, just use what you have, you know, just use what you have. Be comfortable instead of uncomfortable. For some of our walks with God, it is uncomfortable, but that's okay for our walk with him because we got to be honest. Your walk with God is your walk with God. Your relationship is something personal. It's something intimate. It's something that only you and God can have. Only you and Jesus can have. Only you and the Holy Spirit can have. That's something personal and intimate. So if you got to be comfortable instead of uncomfortable, put on comfortability. It's okay because God can still use you and your comfortability. He can still use you when you're uncomfortable. But when you evaluate yourself and you're honest with yourself, use what's comfortable. Comfortable is saying, Lord, you know, I don't even know how I'm going to give this word today. I think that I have to use what I, you know, I think that I have to use like my tactics and like I have to use my knowledge. Like I have to use my understanding. And God is saying, okay, that's where you're comfortable. 
but I need you to get uncomfortable so I can use you. And your uncomfortability is coming on here saying I'm not prepared. And your uncomfortability is coming on here saying, Lord, I need your understanding instead of my own. So whatever that looks like for you, maybe you can be comfortable in this season. That's okay. Maybe you can be uncomfortable in this season and that's okay. And maybe you don't know what to be. And that's okay, because wherever you are, if you're honest with yourself only, God can use you. God can use you. You got to put whatever it is in God's hands. This job is not comfortable. Put it in God's hands. The, the, the money is, is, is dwindling. Put it in God's hands. The kids don't seem like they're going to be following you, God. Put it in God's hands. The husband don't seem like he's coming coming to you, God. Put it in God's hands. The relationship don't look like it's coming. I'm 30 years old. Put it in God's hands. You got to put everything in God's hands. Say, God, here it is. This is what I have. All I have is what I have. I can't make myself have more. I can pretend like I have more, but I can't make myself really have more. I can't make myself have faith. And I can't make myself say, I know how to praise you. I know how to worship you. I've been going, I've been doing this for a year and a half. And I just asked God a week ago, what is my worship? You know, he just answered that for me today when I was reading Romans. It said, present your body a living sacrifice. That is the true way to worship God. I'm like, dang, like I thought I had it together, but I had to be honest. God, what is my worship? I thought my worship was singing. I love to sing. I love to be in front of the, 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 the uh, congregation singing worship songs, but that wasn't my worship. It was a form of worship, but what my worship was is presenting myself. A living sacrifice to God. That means walking in his ways. That means accepting whatever he's trying to get you to accept. Like, like uh, you know, you're, you're, him trying to correct you even. That's accepting it. You know what I mean? So put it in God's hands. Because David put his weapons in God's hands. What are your weapons? Is it your mouth and you just, you just always at the mouth? Is that your weapon? You always got something to say? You always got, you know, you not even right half the time, or maybe you are right half the time, but is that your weapon? When somebody is confronting you, you just got to be off at the mouth. Is that your weapon? Is your weapon talking about people behind their back? Is that your weapon? What is your weapon? What is something that you use against somebody that's not of God? What is that for you? Is it being better than? Is that your weapon? You know, is it the pride? Is that your weapon? Is it the selfishness? Is that your weapon? Is it wanting too much prematurely? Is that your weapon? All of that is okay when you put it in God's hands. When David went to take his weapons, the stones, and put it in his shepherd's bag, that's him saying, I don't know what these stones are going for, but I'm about to put it in the shepherd's bag because these are my weapons. So put your weapons in God's hands. The text tells me that, <laughs> that Goliath cursed David by the name of his gods. Which means Goliath reflects the God that he worships. Which means the God he worships has the spirit of bullying and making, and making people fear him. And making people bow down to him and worship him. That's the God that he worships. Because we are an image of the God we serve. We're supposed to be an image of the God we serve. And we are a slave of the God we serve. Which means if we give love, we serve a God of love. If we give forgiveness and encouragement and comfort and trust, we serve a God of those good things. But if we give in doubt and if we give in drama, that's the God we serve. We serve a God of drama and we serve a God of fear. Goliath served the God of fear because he gave fear or made the people fear him. If we serve a God of those things, it's going to, it, it's going to like reflect. It's going to reflect back on us. Like the scripture says, like, like, you'll know a person by his fruits, you know, a tree by his fruits. Like, whatever you're producing, somebody's going to see. If you go to people in humbleness, 
they're gonna see that okay dang you, you're humble like if if you go and forgive somebody they're gonna see like dang okay she's changing she don't want to have unforgiveness in her heart she don't want to be this person anymore they're going to see it based on your fruit. And if we serve a God of those things, they're going to show with how we treat people. They're going to begin to show because it don't come overnight. It's not like, okay, I give my life to God and things change overnight. No, no. It's I give my life to God and I'm going to have faith to do the things and to change. I'm going to have faith to stop lying. Even if I lie, it's okay because I'm going to continue to have faith. I'm not going to just stop. I'm not going to stop having faith. I'm not going to stop trusting. I'm not going to stop. Like, you, you just got to have the faith to keep going. So even though we are weak in the area, we shield it. Like, Goliath came at David with a shield. We're weak in this area, so we shield it. We put on that mask again, that makeup again, and we start to shield it. And we use armor as a cover-up because we don't want people to see the real us. The real us that's weak and the real us that's desperate mm. and the real us that like don't really like people, but we pretend to like people because we want to fit in and they like them. So let me like them so we can fit in. Like, you know, we, we, we use the armor as a cover up because the real us has been tormented by the spirit we serve. If we keep lying, we serve the God of lying. If we keep doubting, we serve the God of doubting. Like y'all with me? Like we serve what we're doing. You know what I mean? Because we're putting in things into practice, we start to serve those things. You know, like why don't we know the thing? Why don't we know why we do the things that we do? Why don't we know why we're not, why we're tormented? And it's because we're serving things and we're continuing to serve things that's, that doesn't look like the God we should serve. And I'll leave that right there. Because we cannot put into practice the things that are not of God. You know, so we, be, we, we are weak and we armor, we armor those things for so long that we can no longer identify with the weakness inside of us because who we pretended to be for so long. Like Goliath can no longer identify with the person he was before the war. You know, before everything started coming at him, before everything started hurting him, before everything started tormenting him, before the war, he he was a person, he was a regular person. Like when your kids start growing up, they're regular. You know, they're kids, but then they grow up and they start having problems and they start doing things that it didn't look like they were going to do when they were younger, but now they're doing them. It's because now whatever they have accumulated, whatever has been on them, whatever they've seen, whatever they heard, now it's inside of them. You know, so now it's becoming the person that they are. You know, like my daughter just asked me, can I say shut up at school? Even though I didn't want her to say shut up. And I'm just like, with God working on me, I'm just like, I think that's going to hurt somebody's feelings. But if you need to say shut up, go ahead and say shut up. And you see how that's going to make somebody else feel because you don't like it when somebody says it to you. You know, so go ahead and see how that makes somebody else feel. And my son said, you know what? I don't want to say shut up. Lyric probably like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say shut up. But if, if, if we don't give our kids like the runway, they're not going to get to experience some things that we need to, them to experience at such an early age. Like, I'm sure our, our parents, like, they, they've just scolded us. You know, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, you shouldn't do that. No. But if you let them do it early, they won't do it later. And it won't be too late when they do do it. So I'm like, yeah, I don't think it's okay. I think that's just not a good word for kids to use. I don't think it's okay. But... Go ahead and say it if you need to, because you're going to see how that makes others feel.